guys welcome back to a second episode of crappy connection we got our uh, guest here brad taylor um brad chapel and i uh, got our brad here for uh subject of fall transition fall crappie so start it off brad what do you get geared up for what do you get geared up for with your with your tackle your boat everything just start it from a to z for us well it, it starts and goes a long way um I'd say starting with your boat. Um, most people have been through the summer months and hadn't done much uh, fishing and since the spring. Uh, I would get out, check your impellas, uh, check your batteries, check all your connections. The worst thing you want to do is get out there after summer, spend all the time getting ready to get to the lake and your boat won't crank or won't run. Um, check that, uh, check all your rod holders, put new line on your poles. Uh, just the simple basic stuff to get ready. Uh, fall time to me is the best time to fish. Amen. I mean, Amen to that. There's not as many, many people that it is in the spring, and uh, normally you can catch good quality fish everywhere in Mississippi for sure. Yeah, dove season through deer season, man, that's the time I like to yeah. go on the lake. Everybody else is off of you it. You can put your boat in without having to wait 20 yeah. minutes and everything. It's, uh, it's great to be there. That's what everybody always asks me is when's your favorite time to crappie fish and absolutely hands down for me is the fall, fall. October, November. Yeah. It is just, yeah. you don't have the wind, you don't have the fronts. Yeah, I hate the fronts, especially spring. Spring, to me it's overrated. Oh, I yeah. love the fall. And when I look back, uh, I think last year I looked back at some of the tournament results around the Mississippi. The weights weren't very far off from what they were in the springtime. Really? I mean, if you go back and compare it, I mean, you're looking at half pound, three quarters of a pound. Really? On so I never researched. I never looked yeah, at I that. Yeah, I looked at it that way. Um, because a lot of times here in Mississippi, like uh, local clubs or whatever that you fish, and even some of the bigger tournaments, they have fall tournaments. And if you go back and compare the weights, they're pretty close. Yeah. yeah at least uh, fish are, you know, the ones I caught yesterday uh, were absolutely just filled with shad they look like really pre-spawned fish right now yeah and they've been that way for the last i'd say at least 45 days uh these fish are really wanting to fatten up and they're they're wanting to get ready for that winter winter time and j just like anything else in nature you know they're fattening up for winter yeah they're getting ready for it that's that's correct and, and another thing in the fall people always tend to think that it's such a different pattern than it was in the springtime it's really not a different pattern no no i was talking to brad earlier i, I said one thing about uh, fall fishing man it's kind of like you kind of get it back up in them trees and that shallow shallow bite where you, you actually get a jig pole out so, i mean it's where i've come from a little that, bit you can. that's right and the same thing here you we if i was going to fish a tournament today and it's what october is it october yet yeah <laughs> anyway I, I would go fish the same way i would in the spring yeah, yeah. Um, sure. I wouldn't change anything. I may change the way I rig my pole. Uh, I certainly think the springtime is the best time for jigs. I like the single jig, it don't matter how deep of water, as far as trolling. Um, this time of year, I like to fish live bait, straight live bait. So, so for your fall, for your first fall, when you get out there and you know it's pretty much fall fishing, or you're starting to transition in it, you go for the shallow bite first? Well, I, somewhat. I mean, let's just use this lake here, Lake Washington. Um, these fish stay shallow most of the year. They really, people have a misconception and think these fish all run back to the deep water and hide. That's not true. Yeah. They stay in that shallow water. You can catch them there all summer long. They become harder to catch because the water temperature is higher, the metabolism is slower, they're not going to eat as much. Uh, they're very easily spooked. Uh, when they start, you know, the metabolism speeds up and they start wanting to feed, uh, it doesn't bother them. They're still there. The water's cooler, they're more active. Um, I personally, like I said, the only two differences is the way I rig my poles. And I'm a, I'm a minnow fisherman uh, most of the time. Uh, but in the springtime jig, you can take a jig and a, and a minnow and have a bigger presentation. You're, you're shooting for big, active female fish. I think also another factor that would go into that would be water clarity. And the fall is usually so much yeah, clearer that's correct. than the springtime. Yes. That's correct, especially in Mississippi. You yeah. get outside Mississippi, things are different. Yeah, uh, the fall, the fall winter transition rock fish up there at Lake of Egypt, man, that water just crystal clear. Mm -hmm. No, it's you can't you so can't clear jig right it. Now. Yeah. everywhere. Yes. Yeah, yes. and if I went personally to a lake that was crystal clear, the last thing I'd want to do is put a jig in the water. That's just me personally. I put mm -hmm. a live bait every time. It's hard not to fish live bait. Of course, I know that there's so many good uh, crappie baits out there now. It's unbelievable, but uh, it's just hard to beat a minnow. 
straight yeah. minnows, especially you, you in the use, fall. You use medium, medium minnows? It, here, around here, we get to Grenada Lake, I go to a large. Or so you a do a large during the fall? Yeah, I still do the same thing. I wouldn't change anything. Like the grenade, like you go to the bait shop, you get them big old slab minnows for yes, fall fishing. That's, that's really? correct. Yeah, especially if they're biting. Hmm. Yeah, because normally, you know, I, I'm not a guy that wants to go out there and catch 200 crappie in a day. Normally, that's just the mindset I have. Either I'm trying to get ready for a tournament or thinking about a tournament. I'm going for 10 or 12 bikes of the biggest fish I can yeah. get. And go big or go home. Go big or right. go um, So that's, that, <laughs> I don't never, I, I hear these people changing so much. It's really not a change. I mean, the, the fish are coming uh, from the deep water to the shallow water, which is good, but uh, may, may change where you look at for them at. But as far as doing anything totally different, I don't think that's. I, I I just think that's a misconception. Yeah, time on the water is the best thing for you. Yeah, you got you got to put time on the water to put two. In. That's one that's thing. Right. I, you just got to put time in and put two and two together. Sometimes that's the that's the love the challenge I like about it. Yeah. If you what spend about a big cold front? Big cold. How front? does everybody adjust to a big cold front? I know we're talking oh, about wow. these nice days, but a good cold front comes in. Your first. What do you do on a cold front? Absolutely. I I, sl I slow it down that's as much perfect. as I can. Slow, mm -hmm. slow it down and, and minimum minimize that, that bait size in my eyes what about that's, you? that's perfect that's mm -hmm. a, that's what i would do normally my go-to is a half ounce double minnow rig let's say we had a cold front come through tonight and i was going to fish a tournament tomorrow i knew where these fish were at i might go to a quarter three eighths would be the heaviest uh piece of lead i put on there most time i'd go with a quarter and i'd slow down and go as slow as possible so let's say how slow let's, let's get uh, oh let's get here. okay point two point three would be about as fast point as two, I point three. for the uh, listeners out there that's that's the gps, GPS point zero two point mm -hmm. zero three mile an hour and that is crawling that is creeping yeah Real to creepy. to a guy like y'all that do a lot of long line and that's sitting still basically. Hey, you do that, one of the long line. I'm, I'm learning a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> that's like watching paint dry to me, but yeah. Hey, whatever works. True. That's what you got to do with crappie fishing is actually get out there and uh, try different techniques and hey, put them in the boat. True, true. Yeah. Um, we tried this so many times. I mean. Uh, we, we did it one time. The first win I had here on Lake Washington was done that way. It snowed on Friday. You couldn't hardly get a bite, and the water was muddy, and it was so cold. And then on Saturday, we fished, and I knew where the fish were at. Couldn't get bit, so we put a quarter-ounce double minnow rigs and sat still. We got, I think we caught nine fish that day. Now in the same area, is what so, you're saying? The same, same area, area, same area, where I was catching them earlier in that week on a half-ounce rig moving at point five, point six, um, we did the same thing basically sitting still. So if I if so if I was sitting and listening trying to listen to you, what what what's your what's your opinion on, on you're still slow trolling, so what's what's the difference between uh, changing weights out from that to that? Well changing weights out, look, look, let me just give you you want that line basically straight down as you can get it. Sometimes it'll lay back depending on your speed. But let, let's say the fish are biting real good in, in this area. And I want to cover as much water as possible. Well, with a quarter ounce weight, I can't move very fast or my bait is up under my boat or my trolling motor. Right. So I put more weight. And this is the what I tell everybody. What I found, the faster I can go in that area and still get bit, the more opportunity I got to catch fish and, and as many fish as I can get. Um, and I'm not looking for that many fish. I'm just looking if I can call through them, I can come out with seven good ones. Mm -hmm. I'm talking tournament fishing or just fun fishing. Uh, you wouldn't want to put a, a quarter ounce weight on and go 0.5 or 6 or 7 because I mean, it's up on top of the water. Mm -hmm. So the more weight, I'm just looking to keep the bait down. Uh, probably the heaviest I would use personally is a, a one ounce in the fall. And that would be moving it on, on a GPS speed of about 0.5 to 0.7 with a one ounce. So I'm trying to cover as much water as possible and still be getting bit. That's just the way and kind of what I've learned to do. I got you. What about uh, what's your what's your opinion on like? Do you ever look for your electronics for the transition fall temperature water temp? Oh, certainly. Um, so what's your what's your what's your personal preference on that? Like, what temp do you look for? I, it's seventy. Or do you seventy two seventy two to seventy degrees? Uh, when you get below that, then they start getting in a I, I call it a winter pattern. They a little sluggish, a little slower. Um, but I mean, like right out here now, it's probably eighty. 80 to 82 degrees surface temperature that's that's pretty warm and they become their metabolism slow they're not going to eat a whole lot when it starts cooling and, and then your shad start moving and uh the crappies start chasing them they're going wherever they, they can go to where the big fish is that's 
That's, that's the thing I've noticed is um, when I go to a new lake in the fall, what I'm first thing I'm gonna do is ride around and see if I locate Ooh. birds diving on them. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah you that, see birds diving up there like a Egypt like crazy. That's that's one. Do you have any lake? If you don't have if you don't have electronics, that's that's number one deal. If you don't have electronics and you can't look for them birds diving because they're gonna be doing it. That's correct. Yeah, now, they're eating. Yeah, you don't have to have the best of the best electronics to be good at it. Just learn what you can do with your electronics. That's right. Uh, speed and temperature. I mean, they make some really good uh, units for hundred, hundred twenty-five dollars. It's got speed and temperature. Yeah. You don't have to have a two or three thousand dollar unit. That's right. Uh, That's right. I run hummingbirds. I always have. They're simple to use, uh, but there's so many good ones out there now. Yeah, I was messing with Brad's Lawrence, and it's like an iPhone. I kind of like that. <laughs> I'm not smart enough to do the Lawrence. I, I gotta thing. have a, my next boat. I'm gonna have two of them on there just so I just. Yeah, I've got both right now. I've kind of uh, developed a electronics fetish almost because I, I just something new comes out and. If, if I get the feeling it's going to put some more fish in the boat, I've got to get it. Yeah. Whatever I've got to sell almost, yeah, you know what I mean? Blood, what have you. But um, I, I just love electronics. And one of the things that just really flips me out or trips me out, I guess, is people don't know how to use them. No, no, no they got thousand dollars worth of electronics and that. they don't know how to use it. That's that's that, We did that at Rock <laughs> University and they, they, you'd be surprised. What is that again? You yeah, they, pictures up there. They, they just put no it up there because everybody else has got exactly. it. They yeah. cut it on. They really don't know how to set it, move it, read it. Yeah. So your viewers out there, if y'all, if y'all get on YouTube, there's plenty of YouTube videos mm -hmm. out there of how. To, I mean, that's how I taught myself. Me too. And Googling it, images, get, watching YouTube videos, getting out there. I had one time I even put the, left a pose at the house just to ride around, just to, so I know I, I do that a bunch. Fish. Yeah. yeah, I do awesome. all the time on my home. Especially with fishing. I yes. mean, I'm a good side time. imaging guy. I always rely on side imaging. I use hummingbird. I'm not smart enough for the rest, but the thing about it is you can play with a hummingbird and and use it, use it, use it, and if you mess it up really bad, you can go back and hit restore factory defaults and it'll go right <laughs> back like it came out of the package. Yeah, but probably a lot of people are afraid to mess with it because they're going to mess it up. They you can't, can't mess, mess that up. stuff up. No, no it's don't built, be scared. It's built. It's a little computer or something. That's all they really are now. Yeah. It's computers. Exactly. Yeah, you talk about the, the electronics coming out. They're always coming out. Some of the, a lot of my friends back home or anybody I talk to, they're like, what do you use? Do you have like the latest stuff? I said, man, get something that you that you like if you got you know sign image or, or use sonar or whatever get something that you comfortable with learn it and stick with it because it's, you, you know what you because you you're constantly going to try to learn new stuff and you're just going to stay behind a little bit yeah i, I mean i recently just upgraded uh from the first 1197 I, I had it for years and years on my boat and every boat I had, I'd just take it from boat to boat. Yeah. And um, Cause you I, know what's up. You already I, had the same thing you used to. I went everything. on the water and, and people were talking about side imaging. How do I know where it's in, in uh, comparison to my boat? So what I did is I got on a lake like this one. It was, it was up in Greenville, a small lake. And I would go buy things that I could see visually. Piers. Really piers or yes. whatever. And yes. I'd look at it on my side imaging. And then I would compare to where I could see it sticking out of the water at, so I knew how far to adjust my screen, my speed, to make it as close to possible. Yeah, that's, that's a good subject there. Like like you say, like say you're in them, like you know you're in them fish right now and you don't know what to look like for side imaging. Mm -hmm. Pull them, when you pull them poles up and they're still biting all around there, you'll see yeah. what exactly what you're kind of looking for if you have your settings right. That's, that's, that's correct. And uh, I, I rely on side imaging all the time. I love side imaging. That and, GP, and GPS waypoints. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. history. Yeah. Um, I make a lot of uh, uh, waypoints. Probably some of them are no good anymore. But if I'm catching fish there and I, I, I mark it, I mean, I keep yeah. going to mark it and I come back to them, come back. Especially if you find some brush or something that you're going to always come back to. Man. They're there for a reason. Yeah, mark it. Mm -hmm. And then you can go in there and change it. I change the names to whatever it is on that lake so I know what I'm mm -hmm. looking for. But, yeah, I have my waypoints named too at different lakes for different mm -hmm. features. Another thing that I do on a, a, we're talking about electronics a little bit, is say I'm fishing three days on a lake and you've got your trails. You might have a black trail for Thursday, a green for Friday. Yeah, I need to do that. A mm -hmm. yellow for Saturday. And the reason behind it that I started doing that is it gives me a reference point from days past. Yeah. Does some of them even do that? I don't even know. I, I think you can. I don't. Of course, I'm a slow trailer, so I'm not going to really yeah. go from. He, he showed me that, and I was like, wow. 
man, I, I got to figure that it's, out. It's I something so right. basic. See, he's already smarter yeah. than we are. I don't know about yeah. that one, but <laughs> we, we sat there pulling cranks, and, and he, he had, the, you know, just like the same line. He had different lines on his rods, and he's like, you know why, that, why, that, why, that, why I got that done? And I was like, no. I sat there for a minute, and I was like, for tangled up, you know, just the simplest stuff. You know, when you get tangled up, you got your different colors. That way you can separate and untie it well. But yeah, From same. live is to yeah. clear. Correct. That's pretty good. I, I never thought about that. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, and another thing we'll step on, uh, we talked about slow trolling a little bit, but, you know, everybody knows, as far as I go, uh, my favorite way to catch them is long line trolling, yeah. and fall is, like I said, a, a prime time to do it, and uh, a fisher memory that I have that comes to mind is Eagle Lake, you know, several years ago, five, six years ago, and uh, we were out there pulling in first part of December, which I guess would actually be almost into the winter phase, but these fish were still so aggressive, and one of the things that I look for, whether I'm on spider rig or, or I'm a long line troll, is the bite. And what I mean by that, if I'm slow trolling and I just see them just barely move that line to the side, at that point, I know that they're not going to probably bite a jig going by a mile an hour. Right. So I'm about to slow it down and go to a minnow mm -hmm. and slow down the boat. But if they're just knocking the pole Slamming. just about out of the pole holder... I know they're really, really aggressive. That springtime bite. It's yeah. like that springtime bite. That, that's correct. And, and, and you got a good point. You're covering more water. You're doing basically the same thing. You're just... Right. And people don't understand. If you take this area and let's just block it off, and I can go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and still be catching fish, my chances are a whole lot greater than that guy barely moving. And that's what I was talking about, speed and weight. Yeah, uh, I do basically thing. what he does, but um, a lot of times I, I use... Uh, 18 foot pro staff b and m poles and that's a long heavy pole but it'll handle some weight what that does though if they're biting and, and i'm in an area i'm covering so much water that i'm just path. getting a, uh, the path that i'm yes. covering is so much greater than everybody else's i, I can handle that big pole yeah you know that's a, that's a great subject right there that uh that long 18 foot pole a lot of people say man can you how do you how do you how do you deal with it when you get a fish on there i was like when you're sitting up there in the boat and you had them laid out you have a 14 to 16 foot pole. You can't tell the difference from from when you catch the fish and you're hooking it and you're getting it with a net. There's no difference with it, in my opinion. Well, I tell you, let line out. Yeah, that's what I do. And I set every every spinning reel that you could buy. It didn't matter whether it's a B and M brand or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I set the drag light to where when I set the hook, it almost slips. Mm -hmm. So when I'm start coming up, I can just give myself some line to get the pole in the air, and that which that brings the fish closer. Right. Either by that time somebody that I'm fishing with has netted it or it's come off or what have you. Slung it in the boat. But if you don't get people always say, "Well, I'm gonna lose fish with those poles." I say, "Well, if you don't get bit." Then you're not even, you don't worry about it. I mean, you're, you're fishing with ten footers, not getting any bites, and you can go to an eighteen away from the boat. Once you catch it, then you'll figure out how to get yeah, to the boat. That's true. If you get enough bites, you'll you'll figure out how to get it in. Sure. That on the line, and I, if I'm fun fishing, there's very rarely that I ever use a net. That's me too. I'll sling them right in the boat, and if they come off, just put it back I out there. Just catch another going. one, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I do it in term. I mean, I get a little upset in a tournament, but. Um, you yeah, can't worry about that. It's going to happen. Some of the changes during a tournament. Yeah. You're fishing like, ah, man, we're good now. Yeah, tournament fishing, you sit there for the next 30 minutes. But yeah, dwelling on it. Taking the dip net and hitting yourself in the head or something. I'm not even speaking to your partner for I've had, a day had, or two. I've <laughs> had some real <laughs> knockdown drag outs about uh, that. Or miss it with the net and it come off. Oh, yeah, knock them off. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's fun fishing. I don't even use nets anymore, though. It's just. The only thing a net does, especially for a beginner or, or guy that's not as seasoned as some of. Uh, I'd say uh, we are uh, it keep him from breaking pole tips or or damages right. in equipment um, that he doesn't have it stood in the air because right. it doesn't matter you know I, I'm a and m guy and there's all kind of good poles and I'm sure but uh, people just don't like to break a 50 or 60 dollar pole yeah. messing mm -hmm. with a fish so I would suggest they start netting them until yes. they get uh -huh. used to how to how to use their poles I mean it, well, like I said a, a big tip even today on poles is Put out that line before you try yes. to get that that fish in. And no I've seen kidding. poles break because you got the fish in the net and they're junker, you know, yeah, that's circle true, right that's in. That's great too. Yeah, I mean, keep that fish right on top of the water, guys. Right on the surface, net it. But unless you know, you gotta you gotta know how big a fish you got before you sling it in the boat. Yes, that's sure. true. If it's you a know? big one, you gotta yeah. you gotta <laughs> come on with it. I, I threw a two pounder yesterday pretty easily, but did you really? I just for the you know didn't have the the net with me. Yeah, maybe. you got a lot of years underneath your belt, Brad. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of days anyway yeah that's right 
Time on the water cure everything. Absolutely. I, I can go back to that. Everything we talk about, I can go back and say it's time on the water, time on the water. Um, I read when I started doing this, I used to read. And I'd get on the internet and I'd lay in the bed at night and watch videos and videos of people that I had heard about or knew. Yeah, I and still do that. I still do it too. Yeah. But the thing about it is, it's still, they can't teach you by me laying there watching it. I can get an idea, but until I get out there and do it myself. Yeah, it's yeah, everybody has thing. their own style when it comes that's to cracker fishing. That's one of the things that just I absolutely love about this board. There is no wrong way, and there's no absolutely right way to do it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, I, I fish jigs probably 90% of the time, maybe even more than that, actually. Uh, it's just because what I like to do. Um, yeah. There's a lot of guys that like to use minnows and slow trolling. That's you know that's the thing about this board there's no boundaries to it as far as style and on how to catch these fish from the that's great single pole fisherman to the guy sitting on the bank or the pier right now or the guys out here in a 800 hundred dollar john boat i mean some of the funnest times i've ever had is back in the woods here with in a little john boat with a 10 foot jig pole that's right and I think that's where everybody pretty much gets their start from yeah i i had that you know we did that did that and that's still fun to me but if yeah. you're going to compete or you're going to um, try to put a bunch of fish in the boat, the spider rig and long line or whatever you're going to do, that's probably the most productive way. That's true. That's true. It's just getting so many opportunities. That's what mm -hmm. I tell them. I hear these guys from around here when I have a tournament here, they'll say, well, so-and-so is a local. And he, oh, he's yeah. good with a jig pole. I say, he is. And he's very good. I said, but it's going to be tough for him to beat a guy out there with 16 baits in the water, eight poles, and two hooks per line. It's gonna be hard for him to win. I've got this that many opportunities to yeah. catch more fish than he does. Yeah, I'd say probably ninety percent of the tournament guys probably use spider egg. No, probably more. For sure. You know, I've seen you know, I haven't fished I fished a handful of tournaments, but there the, the recent ones that we fished together, you you're seeing a lot more long lining. Yeah, well, it's crank baits too. Crank baits, long mm. lining, I mean the sports evolving uh from these techniques and it's getting people interested in it and um you know, I guide fish a lot and my clients you know some of them have a lot of experience some of them don't have any experience when it comes to crappie fishing and that's just the way that that i really like to uh to show them the sport of crappie fishing and some days just like this past week you know half the day i'll spider rig and the other half i'll long line just to give them you know two yeah. different things to to think about when they go back to their home lake and do well, one thing I always tell people when they ask me, say, well, what about, we'll, we'll be talking about spider rigging. Well, tell me about long line or tell me about pulling crankbaits. For a guy that's just getting into hardcore crappie fishing, I would pick, it doesn't matter what it is, however he wants to learn to fish, I'd pick one of them and master mm -hmm. to yes, the best of his ability and then move to the next one. Don't try to do them all at one time. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. make, make sure you get a real, your ace at it before, before you try to expand your that, that's uh, great. skills there. I've probably been fishing tournaments for 10 plus or 12 plus years, and um, I still don't know a lot about long lining at all, and I don't know very much about crankbaiting. Um, that doesn't make my ways right or wrong. I just... just there's still so much I can learn about spider rig, yeah, and no, that's no. what I like there's to do. So many yeah, techniques it's out there. Never a, a, that's right. You're never a finished off product when it comes to crappie fishing, no. in my mind. There's always something that you can tweak, something that you can do a little bit different. That's the thing that I love about it, too, is details can win tournaments. That's all. It, that, oh, I yeah. tell people all the time, that's what wins tournaments. De pay attention to details, mm -hmm. and you got to have a lot of luck. I mean, look at details. I mean, you got it. Look, I says, Wall says all the time, it's just all luck. I don't know why y'all spend all that money on electronics and all that. Yeah, there's a certain, yeah, there's a certain stand on luck, but you got to find them jokers it's too. It's the details yeah. that helps that luck come yeah. along. Though. Well, if you if you give yourself the best opportunity to find all those details, then eventually some of them will just come to you and you won't even know you got them. Yeah. Uh, I won right here. I won a crappie master tournament right here on Lake Washington and was fishing around some of the best in the country. I'm talking about with them pole tip at some point in time. Mm -hmm. They were pole tip to pole tip with me. And it was just a something happened on Friday, Thursday, and um, a storm blew up. And I was right out here. I was trying to roll my poles up. I didn't have my trolling motor in the water or anything. And all of a sudden, I hadn't been getting any bites. All of a sudden, all my poles just started going down with big crap. That's crazy. So I got home. I got thinking, wow, that was the craziest thing in the world. How did that, what, what happened to that? Well, I think what, what we did during the tournament was we, we put the boat going with the wind with a wind sock didn't even put the trolling motor in the water and um cut the depth finders off anything that was just under the surface of the water they were so spooky that the pinging of the depth finder the trolling motor because those guys had trolling motors all around me going around yeah. and they weren't hard at catching them 
and that's just that was just going home and just I just knew there was something to that. There's yeah. no way I fished all day long and didn't get any bites. All of a sudden, I pull the trolling motor up and mm-hmm. I start floating with the wind. All of a sudden, my poles just start going out. Hmm. Small detail. And, Small detail. Uh, yeah, had I not thought of that, had I just kept my trolling motor and get going into the wind like usual, I would have been in the same shape they were. True. true. Plus, I had a lot of luck. So, <laughs> so uh, let's talk about uh, get on the subject of fall transition here, fall fishing. What's what's your opinion on moon phases? I don't even pay attention. To you don't pay no attention to it at all. I, I would think it's it's a lot like deer, basically. Um, if the moon is out at night, maybe those fish feed better. You're gonna get an early, mo- very or early morning bite, and then a probably mid morning. It's gonna, I think it's gonna fall off some, and then probably late, late afternoon. Uh, with no moon, you know, it's dark at night. I don't know if that really affects them, but it, I would say all day long you can catch fish. Yeah. I saw that. I don't live and die by the, from deer hunting or even the crappie fishing, I don't live or die by the moon phases either. I, I do think on a full moon, they probably do feed all night long. Yeah, I agree. And then, uh, you know, so I'm not a favorite of the full moon, but if I've got the opportunity to go fishing, I'm going to take it, no you matter can, what the moon you is. You can make me believe these fish all eat at the same time. Right. I, right. I, I, I find that hard to believe. I don't think they What do. about barometric pressure? That does affect them. <laughs> that definitely it. affects. Yeah. Like I don't even like just like you. Like I get an opportunity to go fishing, I don't even pay mm-hmm. attention to. It. But if I was a retired guy or did it for a living, I was like, mm, 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 yeah, bear moon pressure messed up. I ain't going. I'm gonna save that time. Yeah. So, um, I, I don't like I a high it. pressure. I don't like no. that. Do, what's, do y'all, are y'all pay attention to the numbers? Like what's your? I want to say thirty it's thirty something. Isn't uh, over it? thirty is usually a high pressure. Over thirty. And I used just, to have a little gauge in my boat that really? would tell you. Um, I forget who made it. It was a little round black dial thing that would tell you. Uh, it doesn't, what like he said, 30s, but it, a sudden one way or the other mm-hmm. is, is, I don't think is good for them. Yeah. There, there was a, there was, I was somewhere and somebody made a, a like a, a, a soda bottle or something. That a you, soda bottle? Yeah, a soda bottle. Like you had like a water in it. Like, like imagine a soda. Was that? Soda? A soda? You never heard of soda? That's a northern deal. <laughs> I guess a soda. A I was pop, just trying to figure out what you were talking about. A pop? Yeah. Yeah, yeah a pop, soda, a, a Coca Cola uh, bottle. Is that better? Uh, yeah, yeah, I got that one. <laughs> All right, so he had this. Uh, this old time I was at, I can't remember exactly where I was from at, but he had like a, a, a cylinder of water in there somehow. And he had it flipped upside down. And the pressure took that bottle up and hmm. down. And he t- and he told me, he's like, I never go on that bottles at a certain level or something like that. I was like, what? And that's when I was first, I was young. That's when I first started learning about barometric pressure. I was like, wow, it just amazes me. You what? know, same thing as a, if I can go fishing, you know, at pressure, high pressure. You know, I think there is a, a, a bluebird day that, I'm not gonna stay at the house because of it. Now I might have to change up the way I fish a little bit That's to adjust to that condition. But it's every day's conditions, and it's just setting a pattern. And you know what these fish are wanting to do, and how they're wanting to bite, and and they change so much through even the day. It, it can go from snapping one minute, and all of a sudden you're not catching anything, and it could be from pulling the trolling motor up because of boat pressure around you, and going oh, yeah. with the wind or you know just the speed of the boat of the presentation of the bait yeah. can something's got, a tr- something's got a trigger I mean, you just yeah. got to figure it out yeah I, of course if they're not biting you're, I, we're constantly changing something i mean whether it's going into the wind or against the wind mm-hmm. with the wind crossways oh uh, i'm always with the wind you, what about you uh, always like the wind I always go. go with the wind i've heard That's this here recently uh, some real good fishermen i know they they always start in the morning and go into the sun whenever they're spider rigging Shadow preference. Shadow preference. It's a new one. It's the quote right there. Shadow preference. Going straight into the... They won't fish any other way at daybreak unless they're going directly in the sun. Hmm. I could see that in like clear water. I, I don't know, like like say grenade in the spring. I, I don't it's, know if that would be a difference in that or I don't, I don't know. know. Something to try. Keep I that mean, in your mind. He's not going the right Some of these old timers that's been fishing for years, yeah. he believes in it. That's, that's the guys you got to like zone into and not and just soak it all in what they're saying and not try to butt in or because any, anybody well, you got to weed some of that out that yeah, they're just talking exactly. <laughs> <laughs> i've heard a lot of that too but yeah i, I actually listened to that one and i i can't say that i totally paid attention to but yesterday morning it stuck to my mind and that's the way i fished yesterday morning going into the sun really? at daybreak um well we caught fish now i didn't turn around and try if it was just uh you know a fluke the, the factor or not but <laughs> It it just stuck in my mind. 
hey, he's been doing this for 40, 50 years, whatever, and he's really successful at doing it. Must be something to it. So yeah. that's, that's just something that but, but it goes back to the leaving. thing. He 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 developed his own little system. Yeah. Um, I, fir- I firmly believe you come up with the way you like to fish and mm-hmm. things that help you and you do and don't do. And if you don't pay attention when you're out there, then day in day out you're not going to be a very successful crappie fisherman. I mean, when you hit the water, when I hit the water, I already have basically a game plan. Mm-hmm. I never yeah. meet this guy at the boat ramp that's putting his boat in. And says I caught him yesterday right over here and i'll listen to him and I, I understand what he says but i still have my own game plan yeah go with I can't what you know ca- yeah i can't go and i've done this over and over in tournament fishing i've seen people say we, we caught him right over there mm-hmm. on that ledge doing this well i might try that during the day if, if i get a chance but I, I can't always catch his fish he might have been doing something different than me yeah that, that tournament listen to that tournament gossip yeah that you gotta zone that out I, I learned that like you just gotta just like just stay to yourself yeah don't pay attention i got tickled i tell this story uh a guy would always ask me a couple years ago when we get in from pre-fishing where did you catch him where'd you catch him when you give me the run around so i was back in my boat and i had we had two different lakes we could fish and i had caught him at this other lake and i didn't want to tell him i didn't want anybody to know and um eagle like i'm guessing right now yeah so i had some big ones too and everybody was kind of struggling i thought wow so i backed my boat in at showtard and this guy comes running up to my boat did you catch him I said, yeah, I'm coming to get some more minnows. I'd already had my boat off the trailer. He's like, you didn't catch nothing. I opened a live well up. He said, golly. I said, don't tell anybody. I said, I caught him over there in that shallow water, single jig. I told him on the north end, and he, I saw him late that afternoon. And he, man, he went to cussing me. He, he said he broke two pole tips. There wasn't a Magar up there. I, I, that, I, what I was trying to teach him is quit trying to, to rely on someone else yeah. to give you the right. fish. Go find some fish. Use what you've studied. Obviously, you know crappie fishing, or you wouldn't be fishing a tournament. Yeah, this ain't a, a, a tournament to follow people. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm talking they're, about that situation. Yeah, you know, they, go with what you know. Yeah, anytime you start following people, you you, you mess up. Yeah, you're gonna lose. Yeah. You're, 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 you're shooting lose. for fiftieth yeah. place. Is what yeah, you're exactly. Doing. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So speaking of fall fishing, still, what's your favorite trip? What what's when you think of fall fishing? Tell us some. Tell us your most amazing trip. Most amazing trip. Yeah. You have one in mind? Just, just amazing. Probably fall to winter time. Um, John Harrison and I were fishing the Magnolia Crappie Club tournament at Showtard one time. We sat on a brush top and about, I guess that brush was in 20 foot of water. We never moved. We, we sat the boat down that morning. We fished that one brush top. And I don't know how many, we must have broke off at least 100 times. But we won the tournament and our, and our, the, our coals was enough to probably get second. And that was just a, a situation you couldn't do that again in a million years. We've been back to that brush pile. Him and I both know where it's at. He's I need gr- the coordinates before. We he's he's a great yeah. fisherman. Your boat outside. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, a probably by far one of the best fishermen I ever fished with, and we both been back to it since. Never caught any more than one or two off of it. Did you pre-fish that? We found it pre-fishing. We didn't really fish it. We went over the top and got caught a big one. We just were going to start there that morning to try to catch one but once we started catching them it was you couldn't leave so you just mm-hmm. sat on top of just it. sat on it for the whole tournament never got off that one brush, big old brush pile it was and it was about 20 foot of water and man i've heard so many people go back to it and nobody's ever caught them it's just that's just one of the situations that everything lined up perfect yeah i remember another saying that kind of goes with that same story would be never leave biting fish yeah. yes yes that's, that's <laughs> you know, a that, that true place well you know and i agree to that a hundred percent but like I said, I've been so fortunate in the crappie world to stay with some of the, you know, I fished with some of the best and I've stayed at some of them's house and I've been around them a bunch. That That's a true statement. But if I'm catching, if I'm in a lake like here and I'm catching a bunch of right. pound and a quarter, pound and a half fish, that's not going to cut it in tournament days. So I, I'm going to move to some other spots. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to sit on those all day long. Of course, you know, a guy that's out there with his wife or his kid that wants to catch a bunch of fish. Now he, I suggest he stay right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, especially if you don't know the lake. I mean, if you're oh, on sir. fish, don't leave them. Yeah. And just because you're catching them, I'm paying attention to how I'm catching them mm-hmm. and what the bite looks like and why and what can I do to change it, maybe trigger a big bite. That That's key right there. Like, you're doing something and you're catching fish. You need to realize what you're doing and that's stick right. with that. Pay attention. Maybe details, you know, from the detail of maybe you're turning the boat yeah. to that pole on the outside yeah, swinging a little swinging. bit faster. Correct. Well, exactly. that bait right there is telling you, or so that true. bite is telling you you need up. to speed up. 
yeah don't daydream just think we're catching them because when you go home you really hadn't learned anything mm -hmm. if you can't tell me why and what was going on and to the fine details then uh, you really hadn't learned anything you know one of my opinion. favorite things to do whenever i see some of my buddies catch fish is actually call them up and say man I just want to know the pattern. You ain't got to tell me what lake. That's me too. I, I don't even know where. I just want to know the pattern. And that's what just keeps me going on this board is those patterns. Yeah. Uh, I used to deer hunt, you know, and just because I love to set patterns on deer. Uh, and crappie fishing has that same mindset to me anyway. It's setting that pattern on these fish. At the end of the day, if I come out of the lake and I've said, well, I've got the pattern down. And that don't always happen, but on the days that it does, it feels so good. Yeah, you feel like you got smarter. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's hard to do. I love that, of course, we get off on what people say and do, but I love to hear people say, you fish a tournament and you come in, everybody's struggling. I said, well, yesterday, man, or oh. Thursday, boy, we killed them big ones. We could have won this thing. Yeah. Well, you weren't fishing today. Yeah. I'm talking about Thursday. We all could have probably. I don't know. So, um get yourself into a tournament and get ready to fish tournaments uh, you you learn a whole lot that's a great place find your statewide club a local club or whatever and get involved in it start fishing them and it's not about the money trust me yeah or, or, or follow or follow crappie connection you get yeah you get info real good that's right <laughs> but but watch that stuff and get involved people are one thing about crappie fishermen they love to share information now that a lot of it you'll have to weed through that's not yeah. very true but uh, just because they're having fun with it, but a lot of it you can pick up details. A lot of, guys, a lot of, a lot of these, a lot of crappie fishermen, I mean, the, you don't even have to know them. And it's kind of like a, a social, social, I don't know how to put it. It's kind of like a bunch of good old boys getting together yeah, fishing. Absolutely. That's what it's like. Yeah, absolutely. Buddies. Yeah. The topic, crappie fishing. You, you, you talk to somebody that loves crappie fishing, man, I'm going to go to that guy and we're going to have some, you know, start hitting them to see what he's got in them, you know, just, just start talking about it. It's just, um, what I'm trying to say is that people will share information real easy if you just kind of talk to them a little bit, some sure. of them. Well, and that's what we're here for today, too. But, you know, there's so many different avenues from magazines to TV to, like I said, fishing tournaments. And that's kind of where I cut my teeth on crappie fishing, I say, is uh, got in and, and wanted to, to meet some of the better guys in the area that knew how to crappie fish and, you know, mingle with them. And, you know, through the years... I've got great friends that come from it, um, people that I know all across the United States. Yeah. It's just amazing that the fellowship that crappie fishing really has into it. Yeah, you put that well better than I did right there. What's that? He put that well better than I did. That well? That's what I was trying to, that, yeah, <laughs> you put that better than I did. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> you worded it a lot better. <laughs> I always enjoyed, when I got started, um, I did the same way. I started right here on Lake Washington. It was a crazy story. Then I joined Magnolia Crappie Club back then, and um, which is still existence. But uh, I joined it, and I, the old guys is what I listened and learned to. And I wouldn't say a whole lot. I just, I mean, if it wasn't anything but walking by their boat to see the way. Tell us your first tournament. Uh, well, how did it come about? I was a bass fisherman. I, I, I loved bass fishing. My dream as a kid was to be a bass fisherman. And um, we were out here pre-fishing for a little local club tournament. I wasn't very, Lake Washington? Uh, right here in Lake Washington. I wasn't, I wasn't really that good of a bass fisherman, but I wanted to be a tournament guy. So I, um, I came in to get something to eat. We hadn't eat. I don't even think we had gotten a bass bite that day. And Magnolia Crappie Club was having a tournament weigh-in. And I went over there and I looked. And I said, holy cow, look at those crappie. I said, I can catch those. Uh -huh. I, said, I went in there and got some minnows, bought a minnow bucket. The one that you throw over the side of the boat that floats yeah. along. I had that. And, and my brother-in-law and I, we went out there, we got some split shots on bass rods and corks. And we pulled up just to get out of the wind in the uh, mouth of a cove over here. And uh, all of a sudden, they just, the corks, they didn't even go down. They were so big, they looked like a tennis ball. <laughs> wow, we didn't know you any got better. some big old corks. Yeah. Yeah. And they just start running sideways. And we had those bass rods, which were six foot six. You know, we'd set in the hook, get into the boat. It was all fun. We would get to the boat ramp and, and, and run into some people that we didn't even know. They were like, holy cow, how'd y'all catch? No, I felt good. I was like, dang, this is how I do it. Yeah. And I saw I, easy. He's I, got his chest out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. This now. <laughs> so that, so I, I joined Magnolia Crappie Club and started fishing. I got to the first tournament. And after that, I was like, man, I, I can catch these crappie. Yeah. yeah. Oh, quick did I learn. That was a fluke. Um, it was a lot of hard work, a lot of days of going and not getting bites, people coming in with big limits. I mean, it was so much to learn. But that's what set it off for me was doing that. Kind of like me, I started crappie fishing and my first tournament was wolf lake and 
I just happened to find this one brush pile and fish were all sitting on top of it and I think we would come in fourth place and I was like, man, you know, I'm pretty good at this kind of deal and and then I, you know, you fish about six, seven more and you're you're uh getting at the end of the line at that point and you're like, Man, I <laughs> It'll it, humble you. It'll humble you and Every then all time. of a sudden you're like, Man, I gotta learn more. I gotta read more, I gotta research more yeah. and just like we're doing here, we, we gotta talk to people and learn some more and uh, that's the beauty of this board. Anybody can start off with anything you got from a bass pole to a catfish pole yeah, to a John, pole. John boat to the <laughs> biggest. Um, yeah, don't be scared to get out there and do it because everybody started yeah. just like you're starting. No, yeah. I started and we had uh, B&M slow trollers, which was a, I want to think it was a me- aluminum or something pole. It was a retractable pole mm-hmm. that had eyes. That said, yeah, really? slow, they're that. called slow trollers. Yeah. They're, they're, I mean, I don't even, I don't, they may still make it's kind of like a black They come down to yeah. five foot, I believe. Aluminum, though? They might have been. Mm-hmm. I mean, they might have been fiberglass. I'm not real sure. That's, um, that's awesome. But it, and it had the real seat that had just a clip in. And it had the, I had a little, like we put on a jig pole, plastic reels. I didn't even have them. And I'd pull up these turns and look at that stuff. I took my brother on. I said, look at all that stuff, man. Yeah. Man, look at that stuff. <laughs> now I got it all and I catch just, just no more, much. just much yeah, fish. Yeah, I see these guys now. every day on Lake Washington for sure. And, you know, there's a lot of these guys around here just use cane poles. Yeah, and yeah. they're slow trolling with cane two poles. Ounces two ounces of weight. Two ounces of weight. Five of hooks per line. And they're eating crappie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's one reason I got into it. Yeah, they're eating crappie. Oh, I love man. it, man. God. There's nothing like going out there catching them during the day and then having some people over and cook crappie for everybody and sure. everybody to enjoy themselves. I like fresh crappie. I got my wife spoiled on that. She won't eat frozen no more. Uh, it makes, it, fresh, it, makes it good for you. You yeah, did the right, right thing. Yeah, you have to go fishing at that point. My wife will always say, we got some in the freezer. What are you going fishing for? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't tr- really try to keep too many in the freezer because then you don't have an excuse to go put <laughs> well, some we in eat the them so, We yeah. eat them so fast it doesn't matter. But, uh, you know, I look back on, on how it would have been um, had I stayed with bass fishing. Who knows? Probably not near as far along as I am now in the crappie world. But I've met a lot of good people and had a lot of good fun. And... Uh, from sponsors to just people, everyday fishermen. I mean, yeah. there's a bunch of good people. And I'm not saying it's not in a bass world. Um, I just know that my, my venue in, in crappie was so much better. I've enjoyed it. You know, it's kind of funny to me. It happened to me um, maybe a year and a half ago. I went to Toledo Bend to a Rogers camp for Bobby Garland Bates, Lou's, and had all these bass elite fishermen that fished the elite series to FLW, everything else. And at the end of the day, when they got through practicing and shooting articles for bass fishing, every one of them went crappie fishing. Every one of them. Every one crappie, of them went now? Went crappie fishing after they got through with their article that they are doing that day. Really? And that's really, it spreads really farther than we really realize as far as crappie fishing. We think just bass fishermen stick to bass. And that's so far from the truth. These guys that I know that... They, they fly out told me, man, I, I love crappie fishing. I love eating, it. and that's what we did. We we went and slammed some crappie, and that's really? what we ate that night. And and that's really where my love of the sport originated from was from eating them because I was like, I'm going to go buy a boat. You know, what do I want to bring home to my family and actually feed them at night? And without a doubt, it was crappie. Mm. Well, I've been at ICAST, and um, the first night we were, it was over with. We were all sitting out by the pool, my wife and little girls with me. And uh, Casey Ashley was sitting next to us, and he got talking. Of course, he called him crappy because mm-hmm. he's from South Carolina. Crappy, crappy. It's, it's, the slang is from it's Northern crappy. Minnesota. But uh, yeah. that's man, he loved. He said he loved to catch him. He loved to eat them. And mm-hmm. I mean, he talked for thirty minutes sitting next. He's a real nice guy mm-hmm. sitting next to us, and he talked about. It. That's all he talked about. <laughs> yeah. So it's amazing that uh, crappie fish, and, and then the sport of crappie fishing is from when I started fifteen years ago, or however long ago it was, is really really grown. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we, I mean, we had tournaments around here that were averaging 28 boats, 26 boats, 30. Shoot, the local clubs are averaging 45, 50 boats. Every uh, day, every the day. The boat ramps are slim full. I mean, and all year long, I got buddies. I see people. I live on Lake Ferguson. I see people crappie fishing every day. Yeah, and, it's uh, spreading. It's, it, it's really growing. It's probably faster than anybody ever dreamed it would. It is. And, he, and I know in the south here that it seems like if you look at the parking lot, you're actually going to see more people going crappie fishing than any other mm. fish out there. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm the state of Mississippi. I mean, that's 
king of the Well, I don't think it's just Mississippi. Oh, yeah. That That's anywhere in the south. I mean, from Louisiana to Alabama. Yeah, to who Florida. would ever thought they had a crappie tournament south of them down at where they, Darbone's where they had mm-hmm. one? And it turned, I mean, there's some great fish down there. I haven't been there yet. I got to try there. Yeah. So, I mean, who ever thought we'd go that far? I mean. I like to see it. We talked about this. I don't know we're getting off subject here of fall fishing, but we like to see it go out west. Have you ever pulled up a map of where crappie is, where they live at? Everywhere. I think they're I mean, out west. And I everything. see a lot of pictures from Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma, Arizona, California. Yeah. And, you know, that's where these techniques, I think, is going to help this sport grow is getting more people interested in thinking, well, we've just got to watch a bobber and a, a minnow go down and to catch these fish. Time. Yeah, I mean, They think it's only springtime. And yeah. it might be just that particular day. But um, it, it goes everywhere in the United States. Maybe not Alaska, of course, but uh, I've, I've carried people from Utah fishing to, you know, Connecticut. I mean, of course, all around the South, but they go everywhere and come everywhere to go crappie fishing. Um, I think a lot of it, too, is based on everybody, everybody likes to eat crappie. Yeah. I mean, it's a good... Yeah. It's fun to, if, to see a young kid get in a boat with you and go catch them and then help you clean them and, and then eat them. I think they get a joy. My little girl does. They mm-hmm. get a joy out of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, she. I, I can remember she's uh, 13. I remember when she was seven or eight years old, we'd go with me. I, I'd make her go. She mm-hmm. really didn't want to go sometimes, but um, we would go and catch them. And then on the way home, she. I remember calling her mom and said, Mom, we got we got 20 crap here, 18. That's what we're going to eat for supper. You know, they were so happy. So it's good for kids, too. Good oh, way yeah. to get kids started. And uh, show them the outdoors and show them what about, you know, how to harvest it, to, whether it's deer or crappie or whatever. It's a great way to keep them in the outdoors. You know, our, our mindset even with this, the crappie connection is teaching people and really showing the, the, the sport out for what it is and, and getting the youth involved uh, to the, even the ladies involved. Into oh, my this wife sport. goes all the yeah. time. Um, she, matter of fact, half the time she asked me to go. She says, let's go right. fishing, let's go fishing. So, hey, if you can keep your wife happy with crappie fishing, she'll yeah. let you go. Yeah, you're in heaven right now. Yeah, well, sure. it, it, go, it comes and goes. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. If they're not biting, she doesn't like to sit there like, I, I mean, I'll stay out there half the day, even if I didn't get yeah, any bites. Yeah. I'll stay out She's there like, all day for two fish. But the first 30 minutes, I knew we weren't going to catch them. I knew that. <laughs> we ought to go, what about this? What are we going to do for supper, you know? But you just have to fight through it and figure out a way to catch them. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. Of course, I know we're talking about fall fishing. We're right in the peak of the best time. Yeah. This is it. And this is the time if you're thinking about wanting to start learning how to crappie fish, it's, it's, you can't yeah. pick a better time. Leave them deer rifles at home. Leave them bows at home because, you, you, I mean, you go in and go. If you hit it right, you're, you're for a ride. Oh, yeah. And if you're close enough to your deer camp, you can deer hunt yeah. in the morning and crappie yeah. fish during the day. That's right. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um it's uh, the fall and especially for a newcomer or a guy that's trying to learn you know you don't want to get to the boat ramp first of all and be in everybody's way and get on the lake and be around, around a bunch of people it's the greatest time to get out there and figure it out and learn yeah, yeah even it, the weather right now in the fall is perfect. generally stable you don't have a high wind and springtime that's what comes to my mind is the wind, wind. yes how I do you do with that's a killer that's a killer with any of that and the, the fall, that's not a factor. Ninety percent of the time, unless you got a major front moving in, of course. But you have stable winds. You know, usually light and variable winds at you best. Ain't, you ain't sweating. You got to be covered sweating. over the cold front. I mean, somewhat of a cold front, but it's just more comfortable. Yeah. In my in my eyes. Mm-hmm. I like to cut the radio and listen to college football playing. And, and yeah. Do you fish. you listen to radio while you fish? Oh yeah. See, I turn it off. I, I'm I'm I all about like stealth radio. mode. I got I got I got one of them uh, uh, padded uh, this. Uh, Silent stalkers in front of my boat. Yeah, so I'm like oh, yeah. dead calm. I, I, I'll turn the radio off. <laughs> turn the phone. I got. I got, I got a phone silent oh, stalker yeah. on my boat. But uh, not me. I, I, I like listening to the tunes. Well, see, that's a good time. Yeah. This was my technique. Yeah, too. of course you have them lines like stretched out on your boat. Right. You know. <laughs> yeah, they'll <laughs> spook them to the bait. Maybe yeah. I don't know, but they can get it dancing before they come to that jig. I, I really uh, picked up that you know different lakes, and it's kind of funny. And it's probably just a superstition on my part, but you know, certain lakes have different country music artists that they prefer yeah. over than other ones. I think uh, I see that. Uh, I remember Lake Darbone. We kind of mentioned that before. I remember I was fishing that lake, and they they really like Willie Nelson over at uh, <laughs> Darbone over there. Uh, so 
we was like, man, that might, that might be the pattern is, you know, keep Willie <laughs> oh, Nelson blaring. So we listen to Willie Nelson like crazy. That's there, the fun memories right there. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Always making memories. Yeah, it's, it's just fun. I got, I, I probably got a million stories mm-hmm. of all the tournaments. I mean, I, I fished as many as 15, 18 tournaments a year before. Mm-hmm. And, and every one of them, you, you either met somebody new or something happened that we always talk about. Mm-hmm. There's never a dull moment going off fishing. And so let's kind of do a summary here. So what do you what do you what what kind of boat prep do you do again for fall transition? Do you do anything kind of big? I really don't. I I would suggest if I was going to do any boat preparation is to, to, to start and go through everything on in the driveway from trolling motor. Make sure your trolling motors work. Make sure your batteries are good. Um, maybe change the oil in the foot. Make make sure all your your uh, fluids are, are correct. Worst thing you do is is take a day off work and prepare all this and go out there and you yeah, you're gonna be stuck out there yeah something negative that you just neglected to do uh battery connections a good thing that'll that'll uh-huh. kill you uh check all your pumps especially your bilge pump and, and your live well pump and, and just just kind of go through your boat and just give it an, a good inspection yeah what about you brad you talked about something about the, the water uh well i, I guess that would kind of stretch over into the the winter time as far as uh lowering your lower unit on your outboard to let the water drain out of it when you get through Certainly. fishing at the end of the day yeah we talked about that it'll freeze and bust the house well, see, it's, yeah I've, I've, one of the coldest days i fished was minus one up north and uh, I, I was telling him when i pull out i start my outboard up and let it run for just a few seconds just to get everything pumped out mm-hmm. and when you yeah. take it home put that outboard down you know so it's probably that, that's a great up, tip yeah you know? Um, other than that, other boat preparation, I'm always going through it. It don't matter when, you know, just always double checking because you you have a boat new or old, you're going to have Break problems. out another thousand. Yeah. Yeah. That's what boat stands by. for. Yeah. I mean, there's always something you can do and work on. All right, uh, so what about, um, is there anything else that you that you go towards, like, uh, getting your equipment ready? Do you, I mean, you change out line? Or, or, I change out line pretty regular. I, I use eight-pound gamma line, clear line. Um it's it's good. clear line you talk about clear line which what's your opinion on clear line versus high vis depends I, on i'm kind a of clear line is. guy i mean i see people that catch it with that high vis line close to me they'll catch as many as i do i just prefer clear line yeah it didn't matter i don't think personal preference now you get you with. get like from real foot above above there going north i think it makes a difference yeah. i think line diameter makes a difference um, I heard a lot of those guys like on real foot talking about if you eight pound test line, you're not even gonna get a bite. All right, so your personal preference, you pretty start out start out on fall fishing. You're you start looking for a shallow water bite. Right. I start well. First thing, let's just say I came out here and hadn't fished here in uh, since last year. First thing I'm gonna do is is I know the water temperature is probably in the high 70s now, maybe maybe 80. But the first thing I'm gonna do is go back to the areas I know or, or that I think are good areas and start just I side scan. I'm looking for what it looks like a cloud on there. And those are usually uh, bait fish, wads of bait fish. And either way I mark them or if I don't see any and I'm in an area and I just see a slick bottom and a fish every now and then, that's probably not a good place to start. All right, so you're looking for shad? Uh, shad, crappie shad are looking for something to eat. There. I mean, especially in the fall. Up. I yeah, they're looking they're, for they're, food. They're, yeah, they're they're getting geared up for that cold water, and they they're eating their butt off. If I see a bunch of birds move around, uh, they they go from spot to spot. I kind of look at that. I know that, and then I'll side scan it, or even if I don't have a side scan, say I didn't have one on my boat. I, you can still figure that out on a regular sonar. What mm-hmm. about? Do you concentrate on the fall? Do you concentrate on like any ledges or anything? Yeah, a, a lot of times, and of course, at Lake Washington here, we don't have any ledges really to speak of, but. Uh, let's just go like to Ross Barnett. Yeah, I would definitely be looking for ledges. Uh, next deep, to shallow deep, water? Yeah, next to shallow water. What about flats? And flats, flats kind of to me are like ledges. I mean, you're, you're gonna you're gonna run to an, into an area off of a ledge that's that's a flat that maybe six foot of water all the way across it. And those fish just may be up there because of the shad are there. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing I can tell somebody is learn to read their electronics so they know what shad look like. Yeah. If you see them on the surface, and you're, you're say you're island, and you see you see them a lot of times, look yeah. at your screen and, and put see them what they look like. Put them rods you know, in the water. Same, yeah. same line here that I look for whenever I'm looking for a shad on my units, and it goes really to the di- down image side, but I look at the how tight those balls of shad are. If those shad are just really spread out on your unit and not balled up at all, that's usually an area that tells yeah. me that they're not getting fed up on. 
Yeah, it's a good, yeah. great tip right there. Great tip. Uh, so what he's saying is, if you if you see side imaging, if you don't know what crappie or bass look like on your side imaging, and you see shad and they're balled up real tight, they're scared. Don't fish it. No, no, no. no I mean, all yeah. around. I'm sorry. Got yeah, do fish it. Yeah, yeah do, do, do fish, fish it. it. Don't don't fish it where shad is um, spread out. Look for them tight balls. Yeah, they're getting fed upon. They're they're running for their life. They're hanged in together. So. That's something that I do look for on when I'm looking at shad is what they're doing. Uh, if they're running for their life and they're balled up and jumping at the surface, that's an area that something is eating them. Yeah, you can go in Bass Pro and look at those little uh, little bitty fish in there. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't even know what they're called. The little small ones. Watch them when when nothing's active in there. They'll all be spread out. And you let one of those fish just kind of ambush one of them or something. And watch, they'll all run to a corner and be I'm really so tight. I'm so do that when I go. Yeah, next yeah, time I, got, I didn't think about that. It's Watch how close they they'll they'll run to an area and just get really tight. Cool. I picked that up years ago from uh, watching the Discovery Channel, watching these guys you know scuba <laughs> on dive the, on the deep sea stuff. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it shows from salt water to fresh water, and it's just a look on prey fish. That's awesome. Yep, awesome tip right there. So. Um, Bare minnows, what you pretty much go with? Yeah, I do in the fall. I think that's what they're feeding on, and you can't get it. So we got a bare minnow fishing right here, and we got a long liner right here. Yeah, so we both catch them. Both yeah. catch them. So there's that's key right there. There's so many techniques to crappie fishing that it's just where do you start at? Where do you start at? That's a good deal. Like, uh, what what kind of boat you have? You know what I mean? You, I don't get, think boats really matter. I mean, it's it's what else you want to do. Uh, of course, if you're wanting a long line, it's best to have an eye pilot and you know different things to make that technique kind of sync up together um but you know start with what you have or what you have at your house what you have in your garage as far as boat goes um i've been through them all and i yeah of course uh they're all catch fish some are more comfortable than others on and how to fish and fish out of them uh but i you know everybody has their own preference yeah. don't let your boat at home if you think it's not a crappie boat or something don't let that hinder you from going crappie fishing um i do a lot okay well, speaking of uh, fall fish i mean bank fishermen can get on it too yeah they're gonna be up there doing it yeah they, they, they can get back in them the shallows the, the yeah go back to where by. they caught them in the springtime exactly and go the back exact there same thing. great tip go back to your favorite bank when you spring fish yeah i, I certainly yeah but you can throw a cork in a minute just sling it out there and yeah. it'll work yeah well my favorite my my fall What's your fall transition, Brad? I mean, like, what what do you what do you get? What do you what do you look for? What do you look towards? You know, right now, what I've looked for in the last three or four weeks, and you know, big fish, I'm gonna start shallow, and so you'd say the mature shallower fish. the better, and I'm gonna start as shallow as I as I can almost fish. Uh, I'm talking three foot of water or even less, uh, and then I'm gonna move back out if I'm looking for big fish. Yeah. And now if I'm looking for fish to cook, I'm going to probably look a bit a little deeper. What's your opinion on that? What's your opinion? Why does, why does the bigger fish go shallow? I don't know. I don't know if it's just the bait or the less pressure. And they're there. There's not as many people fishing that area usually. Most it's not, it's people look pressured. for the volume. So it's not pressure. That's how they're getting older because they're not getting caught. Um, so I'm gonna look shallow if I'm looking for a tournament now. If I'm guiding, I'm gonna probably look deep, um, and I'm gonna look like like Brad said a minute ago. I'm gonna look for the bait fish. I'm gonna look what they're doing, uh, and then even if I start spider rigging, I'm gonna try to go as fast as I can to catch them. Uh, same thing with pulling jigs. I'm gonna go as fast as I can to catch them, and and then I'm gonna back off. You know. If, if I'm catching them at 1.5, that's fine. But if I'm not getting bit, I'm going to slow it back down to maybe 1.3 to 1.1 to whatever the speed that I can catch them and move the fastest is really where I want to be at whenever I'm fishing, regardless of so if I'm just trying to catch some for the night or mm -hmm. I'm trying to do it for a tournament. I'm trying to catch and cover water as fast as I can. So, um, What's the fastest you go in the fall? I don't have a speed limit. You don't? You uh -huh. go 2.0? You know, I hadn't been that fast, I guess you would say, but uh, 1.4, 1.5. That's moving. That's moving. So we talked about this earlier. Have You you haven't tried pulling cranks in the fall, have you? You know, I, I have not, but I know a lot of guys that do, and I don't think it's even, you know, they're scared of the, the size of the bait. I think it just goes back to the temperament of the fish 
and how many you want to catch of them yeah um you know in reality uh, the fish are the boss out on the lake and they're going to decide on they're going to tell you how they're going to do it yeah, sure. yeah, yeah that's a great uh, let time. the fish tell you mm -hmm. take down on that if you got a buddy spider rig and he's caught 20 and you're sitting at three yeah. you're doing something wrong right. either you maybe put those crankbaits up and or put those jigs up and slow it down even more or it can go the other way i mean i've long lined next to people spider rigging with long bait with live bait and i've caught a whole lot more fish and it's for a lot of the factor is I'm moving and cover more water at that same time. Yeah, we did that at uh, I did that at Eagle this past mm -hmm. spring. Didn't you? I, the screen loaded up with uh, shad and just everything, and I went. Through, he was long line, and I was sitting there spider rigging, and uh, and uh, went through there. Didn't catch nothing. Next day, I told him I was going to try to long line it through there. Started popping them, and they, they was there. It's just crazy how the to different limit. technique, man. Yeah, a reaction bite. Too, Reac that's what it was exactly what I called it. Wasn't it a reaction bite? Mm-hmm. It's sure. a great place to fish Eagle Lake. Well, we got yeah. a bunch of them, but yeah. Fall is, fall is a great time if you got if you even remotely thinking about being a crappie fisherman or getting uh, more into it, then I definitely would start in the fall. Yeah, fall fishing for me is really weird. Up, up where where I fished that Lake of Egypt, kind of talk about that a little bit. Um, the fall fishing up there is goes into January. I mean, pretty much from the fall. I mean, they're they're transitioning. They're making their way up. I fish a power plant lake, mm -hmm. so they're moving from like down lake, and they hit their they hit their spots. They hit their their treetops. You know, this is black crappie we're concentrating on. So they're really all together all the Structure. time. Yeah, and then when when the fall the the fall bite, it's it goes all the way through winter. I don't care if it's snowing or whatsoever because that that power plant's putting out that warm water, and we're like. The coldest it gets is like 40, 42 degrees, up to 55. So like, for me fall fishing, I'm getting geared up. I'm rigging up my casting poles. Yeah, casting poles with the bobber, and when they get up there, they're starting to heavily feed when it's snowing outside, and you're you can cast bobber and jig up on the banks in three, four foot of water. Huh. So when I when I get geared up, and I go out in the water. I go, I just kind of scan. If you know it's kind of fall or cold, you go scan to look at your deep structure, and of course the shad's doing that movement. Up north, up to the power plant, and then uh, if they ain't throwing there, you need to start looking on the banks. So that's my, I get, I get geared up on casting. That's that's my fall fishing right there. Yeah, three it's different techniques cool. going yeah. here. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty epic. So you're out there in cold, cold weather, and you're casting up on the bank. And you said the water temperature gets high cold. It gets 42 to 55 minus one degree outside. The coldest one I had this winter. Oh wow! Is yeah, that because it's, it's a power plant? It's because it's a power plant constantly running and then shad you gotta look for the shad they'll follow the shad you know so you don't see nothing out deep you know you go up on the banks and you're pretty much spawn fishing out there oh, wow. it's pretty crazy i'd be lost as a goose yeah it's uh it's one of the hardest lakes i ever fished hmm but once you key in it's it's, it's amazing crazy. that you can go around and get if you get out of the state of mississippi of course mississippi lakes they're all basically somewhat the same but you start migrating north or go south, like go to Florida, it's a lot of black cropping, it's a lot of long liners in Florida. Yeah. And then you come to Mississippi, it's mainly spider rigging, going slow, muddy water. Then you can start going north, it changes again. It's, yeah. it's crazy. You can learn a lot of stuff by moving around and fishing a lot of different lakes. Yeah, me and Brad talked about the the, the person, what'd you, how'd you call it, what'd you say? You worded it real good, of how the crappie, uh, the different lakes got different personalities probably. yeah I, i'm a firm believer on lakes have personalities and what i mean by that is you know some lakes uh might be jig colors you know to to grenada gold right here in my hand which is a a muddy water color i would say a gold flake with an orange tail and that's that's definitely a, a why it was named grenada gold because i really felt that would be a where it would fit in that to even uh, Barnett, Ross Barnett, another one of my home lakes I grew up on. This is called Vegas, and it's a it's a purple pink color. But uh, I think different lakes have a a personality, and I do think they change year to year. But um, different lakes have like Grenada Lake. I know in the springtime, you have gotta have a minnow on to catch fish there, and you're, you're pretty much yeah. got to. But you can't get too fish. big either. No, no you can't. Uh -huh. I mean, three inch tube, and a quarter ounce head. With a two odd hook and a minnow. I mean, there's Who a reason. Whoever thought we'd be crappie fishing like that? Yeah, I mean, there's a reason they had big minnows there. I remember my first time. I mean, I was sitting a hook on a minnow. 
Cause you, you got they that's just that's just part of it. That's the way life. Oh is, yeah, you know. I fish in the springtime with um, uh, jig pole, a BDJP, B and M poles, real lumber. It's probably the number one pole they got. But I can tell you that that minnow on that pole, it will make the end of the yeah, pole tip jump around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, we're using some big ones. Uh, I pour my own jig heads, a quarter ounce head with a two alt hook. That's a big hook for a crappie. Yeah, it is. I mean, you don't want to use that anywhere else. I, I mean, we do, because um, here in Mississippi, get outside of Mississippi, I don't know that I'd use that. That's a, that's a big piece of lead with a mm -hmm. big hook, a, usually a two and a half inch tube, and a minnow on top of that. Yeah, big profile, big profile. I, I helped, uh, like I said, John Harrison and I fished a bunch together, and he guides. I've helped him some through the years, very little, but I've helped him some. And, Everybody I've ever had in my boat, and they look over there, and I can see them just kind of looking at their partner, going, mm -hmm. "They, they just really unsure of that." Yeah, yeah. It's kind of usually one of the first things I tell people when they get in the boat with me is, "Just give me a few minutes. There's going to be a method to this madness." And what I mean, like from pole lengths. I love that quote. Yeah, to uh, to That's these cool. to these jigs, how and how they're tied, but there's a method to the madness, and. and at the end of the day they're like i understand what you're saying now and how the boat set up as far as where's my fish finders at where's my pole holders you know what i got a little kicker motor on the back uh, yeah or this electronic over that one and maps and there's just so much to it but uh fall fish that's, and i'm pumped that's up been really it. fun to me you mentioned uh boat setups uh i got on with uh, war eagle boat company about two years ago it's been a fun thing that i've done is is setting up boats trying to figure out how to make the best possible mm -hmm. crappie boat they've got a good one now um uh, a 2170 blackhawk it's a really good boat you know i applaud war eagle for for actually looking at crappie fishermen oh, yeah. and saying hey we need to they're open to listen I yeah mean, that's uh, great they won't i mean i'm not gonna say that you walk the door and tell them something they're gonna change it tomorrow right, i mean yeah. they're a manufacturer they're trying to sell boats <coughs> excuse me but they uh they're geared that you know they're geared to the crappie fishing mm -hmm. Uh, my new boat has got some features on it. Uh, there's a track system in it for the rod holder, so you don't have to drill that many holes. Uh, so they're they're looking for crappie fishermen. A track crappie system. Boat. What 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 kind of it's, track it's system? It's a it's across the front deck of my boat. It's a, a extruded piece of aluminum, and it's got this. I, I wish I had a picture with me, but it's got a bracket that just slides in there. I can slide that. It's got a wing nut on the back, and I can move my rod holders where they're. I use Driftmaster. So it's a Driftmaster setup. It is, but you could use it with all of them. Any single holder you can use it with, or hmm. a T-bar. And you can move it anywhere in that track you want and tighten it down. It's it's, it's special that I, they spent about a year or so, uh, Mike and John Ward did, trying to figure out how they were going to do that. And they came up with my boat. Uh, there's some other guys that are sponsored by them too in the crappie world. My boat, I think John Harrison's boat now has got it in the front of his too. Hmm. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that I have to Drill all, that's what a lot of people don't like to do is drill all mm -hmm. the holes. Yeah, I'll drill a hole in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah me too. My other <laughs> boats have just been, look like they ought to be a, a, a cheese grater. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's a special feature and I enjoy I've got some more ideas for them coming up uh, to mm -hmm. try to how to make it better for the crappie fishing. So when this guy goes and spends thirty or $40,000 on a brand new boat. You got to spend no extra money. Well, he didn't want to have to drill holes. Yeah. But most people that, that buy that boat uh, love it and they don't want to go drill a hole. keep it in new condition and it, so this this has allowed uh, uh, the holder to be slid anywhere in the boat that, that fits you know if I'm fishing a brush dive, a lot of times I'll push mine real tight together because I want them right there yeah together. it's a great 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 and, you know, tight now, uh, break line yeah and now I'm out here with 18 foot pro staff poles and I'm trying to cover a big fan I'm going to spread them all out so all I do is unloosen that wing nut spread the holder out mm -hmm. and um, and they're all single holders too so that helps. I mean, just some tips. Uh, uh, you can go to my Facebook page, and I think I've got some pictures of the front deck of my boat. Or they Does can, it have it on their website? Uh, I'm not sure. No, it's not on their website yet, but uh, I'll be glad to share it with somebody if they're interested in it, but uh, it's, it's great. And those are just some little yeah, tips. We can put it in our comments <coughs> after this yeah. episode. Yeah, that'd be great. And um, like I said, fish and brush pile, I push them real close together. Cause I don't want my poles because these right. outside poles will be completely that's, off the top. That's a great tip. Let's talk about that for a second. What, what Brad's talking about is if you're fishing a brush pile and you're concentrated on, let's say a 10 foot brush pile, 10 foot wide. What he's trying to say is that you want to take your rod holders and move them where Bring all, your, the poles, to it. all mm -hmm. your poles and baits is into the strike zone. You don't want to have two or three poles in, in it where you got 
your extra three or four on the outside where there's no fish there. And I ain't gonna get bit. Yeah, yeah. so that's a great tip. But the only thing I can, the, the best tip I can give you about that is when you do that, you really have to pay attention to your pole tips because they're so close together. Mm -hmm. If you if you catch a fish, you've got to get, <coughs> excuse me, you've got to control it. Yeah, so you gotta hurry up and get it out. That's right, if you, if you play with him, he's gonna get in all your other rods. But uh, that's just a little, some of the things that we do in my boat. You catch yourself fishing a lot of structure during the fall? I'm a structure guy. I, I fish it all year round. If I could. You got 360 on the front? I do. You do? Mm -hmm. you, but you love that, don't you? I really ain't smart enough to, I, I get frustrated and think, <laughs> well, I start, I'm, I'm looking up here in one of my poles of boat over the boat, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where I am. I don't even see that fish. Yeah. I've yeah, had that. It, it's pretty cool. I need it bad. Brad's got it. He's starting to learn it. Yeah. That's still a lot to learn. Like I said, I don't think yeah. it's a... You're never going to stop learning. No. Just as soon as you get it learned, they'll come out with something Oh, it's else. obsolete, I'm sure, already. Oh, yeah. The day you buy it, it is. Mm -hmm. What they tell me. Well, yeah, I mean, you got... <coughs> what, uh, who is it that has, like, a live feed out the front? Garmin? I mean, that's yeah. crazy. That's I so saw crazy. a video the other day. Um, somebody had where uh, they had that pan optics or mm -hmm. whatever. The guy dove in the water in front that's of the boat. Nuts. And you saw him go down and come yes. back up. I mean, you see him swimming his arms. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Swimming his arms and everything. That's great. So... It's uh, that's pretty epic. Is there anything else you want to cover? No, I'm good. I'm just excited and ready to go fishing. Me too. I'm going with you here. <laughs> Where are you going to? Probably back out here, Lake Washington. Are you? Got to drive home. Ready for Monday? We we'll shoot you a picture or something. Yeah, once I do that, <laughs> it's gonna make me feel bad. Well, um, anything else you want to add or anything? Let's get on the water. Time on the water. Time on the water. Well. Brad, it's been, a, been an honor having yeah, you here as a guest. Yeah, thank y'all for having me. No problem. Uh, you know, uh, Till the next episode, guys, probably next action. Brad Taylor as a guest. Brad Chapman and I, Justin Berry. We'll see y'all later. Appreciate it. Thank you. Holla.